Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Ditherboy and any animation software to create like this transitional either in effect or dither out effect, depending on which way you animate this. Um, I will show a demo on screen so you can see what I'm trying to describe. We're going to be using Ditherboy and whatever I'm using After Effects, but whatever you've got access to that has keyframes, that's basically it. I'm going to make this tutorial as quick as I can. There is some learning for this one uh, that I will go over in the future, like a later version of Ditherboy. So for this one, I'm literally just going to show you how to put the effect together. And yeah, we'll go over some of the more complex parts of it in the future. If you're new around here and you don't know what Ditherboy is, just a quick version. It is a dithering software from Studio AAA. It's our first ever software. Software. It's one purchase, no subscription needed, free updates, free tutorials like this, and it's made to dither images and videos basically so you can do work like this that I'll show on screen. So you can either get it, wait for the updates, learn it on your own, or you can get it, follow my tutorials, request features, stuff like that. Um, the video update has just gone out like this week or depending on when you watch this video it's around the middle of march this went out uh, and it was the number one most requested thing and we got it out pretty much straight away so anyway to get on with it i am in after effects with a 1080 by 1080 composition uh, which is eight seconds long and i think i've just gone for 18 frames per second the main reason i went for 18 for this is because i'm going to upload this to instagram and i want the file size to be small so that the Instagram compression doesn't basically just destroy it. This effect also works better with something that is easily visually identifiable through the dithering. So what I mean by that is don't go for like small text or highly detailed patterns. I'm just going to go for a face. So this is a stock photo from Unsplash. Um, I'll maybe pull a few more in. Silhouette might work as well. And I'm just going to sort of crop them to how I want them. I'm going to go quite zoomed in for the face. But from here, I'm just going to right click and go to new adjustment layer. And then under effects and presets, if you are in After Effects, just go to window and make sure effects and presets is ticked. I'm just going to go to levels. I'm just going to bring in a regular levels adjustment. And then if you click on this little drop down for the output white and pull this around, you can see that this will just fade your image to black. Um, there's other ways to do this, but levels gives you a bit more control if you want to edit other properties, basically. Um, so I would recommend levels because once you've done the tutorial, you might want to come back and mess with other stuff. But to animate this, we are just going to toggle the keyframe on for the histogram, but I'm going to turn mine all the way down first so that our first keyframe has the image completely black. And then if I pull the playhead in a little bit and turn the output white all the way back up, now it will just animate that basically. Then if I go further down my timeline and just drop down this little arrow here, make sure you put your levels adjustment on the adjustment layer, by the way, because I just didn't. But if you drop down this little arrow here in your timeline and go to effects and then levels, you'll see the keyframes here now and you can pull these around if you want to. So I'm going to pull this keyframe in a little bit so that it's brighter sooner. And then I'm going to drop another keyframe here that is the same value as this one. So the way you do that is just clicking this little diamond. So it just drops another key identical keyframe there basically. And then at the end of my timeline, I'm just going to turn the output white back down to zero. So now we've got this loop that sort of just transitions from black and fades the image in every time. And because we've done it on an adjustment layer, if I just toggle that one off and this one on, it'll just apply the same to um, to my silhouette image. So to keep things simple here, I'm just gonna export that through Adobe Media Encoder, and then I'm gonna export the other one as well. So now I've exported those, I'm just gonna open up Ditherboy, and I'm working in version 2.0, so you need version 2.0 to have the video support. Version 2.0 isn't um, doesn't come at any extra cost or anything, so it's included no matter what with Ditherboy. But if we come to File, Video, and Import Video, and then browse to wherever you saved yours, so I'm gonna go for the silhouette animation first and just press Open. And as you can see, we get a little error message that says unsupported video, and that is because I forgot to go to Help and enable Expert Mode. That's just there as like a... Um, 
limit to stop you from importing anything insane. What I didn't want was people importing a two hour video or something ridiculous for the first time they ever tried to dither in Dither Boy. Um, so without expert mode on, it will let you dither like normal videos basically. But anyway, it's flagged hours because mine is a lower frame rate. But now with expert mode on, I can go to import video again and import my silhouette. From here, basically, you just want to build a dither effect, any dither effect you want, on the demo frame it gives you. So if I go for Floyd Steinberg, now this one, it's not that like discernible what this is, but obviously we're working with frame 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0005. So it's basically picked up the first frame that has something in it. So kind of like here, kind of like here in the timeline. So what you don't want to do is go and get this with the contrast and the luminance threshold to a point where it's entirely visible because then when you get further in and it's at max brightness, these settings will basically just have your dithering be one big white canvas, probably like that. So I'm going to go for an Atkinson dither and all I would recommend is just messing with the threshold until you can see something coming through, not everything, but something coming through for an early frame. So if I just go for like this, for one of the earliest frames, you can imagine that maybe a few frames after this, you'll get something that is more visually identifiable as, as what your original image was. Obviously you can experiment and do what you want, but if you want to get good results, like the demo I showed, this is the kind of thing you want to do. I'm going to lower the scale a little bit to three, and then I'm going to go file, video, export video. And from here, Dither Boy will apply this effect to the rest of the frames and render the video out basically. And as you can see now, if I press play, you get something that dithers in. It's kind of static in the middle because there's not much going on. And then it fades out your dither. So if we go back now and let's use the face as a demo this time. So it's basically this point between these two keyframes that's a little bit boring and doesn't really have much going on. So if we go and make another new adjustment layer and then type into our effects and presets for turbulent noise, change the blend mode to overlay and then sort of using these existing keyframes as a template, you can keyframe the contrast of the turbulent noise so that it's at zero at the start and zero at the end so that the turbulent noise kind of gets more intense with the levels keyframing that we did. And then if you press Alt on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch for evolution, you can write a little expression here for the turbulent noise. I'm just going to write wiggle open bracket two. 360. Those numbers represent frequency and amplitude. So because as you can see, the evolution for the noise is on a wheel here. So it has 360 degrees that you can input. That's why I've used 360 for my amplitude. And then for the frequency of two, this means that it will cycle through the 360 degrees twice per second or it will at least aim to and depending on your frame rate and stuff it'll represent sort of what it can based on your wiggle expression obviously at 18 frames per second it probably can't represent all of that but what you can see as a result is here in the middle now there's something a little bit more interesting going on so that here on the silhouette at this point in the middle where there's not much going on there will be a little bit more going on um, I'm probably just going to turn down the opacity of this adjustment layer because I don't want it to be too chaotic uh, and I don't want a crazy high file size either. So yeah. So now I'm just going to re-export the face and before I do anything in Ditherboy, just to make sure that I'm not going to break anything, I'm just going to go to help and click on purge temp folders. This is just going to delete any temporary folders that were made while dithering this. And just to be safe as well, I'm going to restart the app. So now I'm just going to re-enable expert mode and go to video, import video, and import my new and improved face animation with the noise. And as you can see, it gives you a really dim frame to work with. So for this one, I'm going to go for Bayer ordered, and I'm just going to up the luminance threshold a little bit and I'm going to lower the scale a little bit too and then I'm going to export. So it's just exporting and this is the result for this one. I'll show a higher quality one on screen but this is how it'll come through like in my screen recording. I'm sure it'll look better if I put the actual file on. Now I probably went a little bit too fine with the size here so I'm just going to redo this one 
with a Floyd Steinberg dither, and I'm going to go for scale six this time. In fact, I've just reset the controls so I can do that again from scratch. So Floyd Steinberg, scale six. I'm kind of going to leave everything else alone just to see what we get. But video, export, and we'll see how this one looks. So yeah, this one's probably more of what I was going for originally. Uh, I just went a little bit too fine with the Bayer ordered dither. But as you can see, it starts at nothing and the density of the dots ramps up to like construct the face. Then they dance around a little bit in the middle and then the density sort of fades out the construction of the image at the end now obviously what i've made in this video probably isn't probably wouldn't use these in whatever projects you might want to dither in but this is i mentioned at the start that there's some more like complex or more like detailed learning about dithering that's involved in this and that is just that the luminosity of your images will affect the density of the dithering when you dither in dither boy if you leave the settings alone so this means that if you wanted to quickly fade in some text but you wanted it to be a bit more interesting so you wanted it to build in with dithering like this you can spend a little bit more time on keyframing a little bit more time adding these effects like turbulent noise or other similar ones and basically use dithering as like a transition this is all stuff that i want to start doing in my work but i'm really busy with like making sure there's a tutorial for this or uh, just other stuff that we're working on for dither boy so um yeah i just wanted this to be like a demonstration of the thinking behind how you can fade in or fade out with dithering using luminosity and things like turbulent noise at some point in the future when dither boy is closer to being complete there's still more stuff that i want to get added and stuff that we're working on so when it's more complete so that i'm not gonna make the same video twice i will go over and do a full video that covers things like the the logic i explained before with um how luminosity affects the dithering and the patterns and the density and stuff like that but i want to do it when dither boy is basically finished so that i'm not if i make the video now i'll probably want to remake it when dither boy is done to give it more context so yeah i'm gonna um do a big video on dithering and a bit more of the like computer science behind dithering later date basically is all i'm trying to say that is basically it if you save this after effects project you can then go and import whatever you want text 3d stuff uh footage whatever and just use these keyframes but if you're watching this and you asked for video then i imagine you know what you're doing and now i've explained how this works you've probably got more ideas for how to do this better than me but as always thank you for watching and thank you for your support and i will see you in the next video